ladies and gentlemen. Good morning from beautiful Dubai. And welcome to this session, which is about building the lunar ecosystem today, actions for indust from industries and agencies. My name is Sarah Maini. I'm from Hamid Barashid Space Center, and I'm very pleased here to be moderating this session and uh, having all the speakers presenting here. So today we'll talk about the fact that humanity is moving towards a having a sustainable presence in the space, starting from having a settlement in the, on the moon. So we can see that many initiatives are taken all over the world to prepare the return of humans on the natural satellite before the end of this decade. For example, we can see that USA has an Artemis program, China and Russia working with the ILRS, Europe with the EL3, and many other nations like UAE, Japan, and India. In addition to space agency, we already see commercial companies developing on that topic. While some focus on transportation to the moon, others are taking a look into other um, segments like how to use the local resources, producing the energy, and refueling in space. Indeed, only the development of this lunar economy based on moon resource utilization would allow us for a successful return and sustainable presence on the moon. In that prospect, the best of space terrestrial technologies will be necessarily, and international and cross-sectoral collaboration will be key success factor. From here, it's my pleasure to introduce to you all our panelists here, and I'd like to start from my right side. Bert Bergra Bergra Bergra, since 2019, he's the director of space market for Air Liquid. Air Liquid is a world leader in gases technologies and services for industry and health, also a key industrial partner for Ariane program for more than 50 years. Then we have John Plovac. Since 2014, John triggered the application and science directorate of Kenes and as senior expert and now as program manager for human spaceflight and exploration activities. Then we have Hamad El Marzugi, a project manager for the Emirates Lunar Mission and oversees the computer and imaging system of the Rashid rover. He joined Mohammed Barashid Center in 2015. Then we have, uh, yes, we have Alan Wagner. Uh, he's, uh, since 2010, Alan was appointed as a vice president at the National and Space Institution at Airbus Defense and Space. Alan has been an aerospace engineer since 1985 and joined CANES and participated in different Ariane launch campaign. Finally, we have Julian Alexander Lamami. He is managing director at iSpace Europe. He is currently preparing iSpace Europe to be leader in lunar rover technologies, exploration, data analytics, and space resource utilization. Okay, so I'd like to remind you that for this session, you can be engaged in the discussion by submitting your question and evaluating the discussion on this Slido platform. And let's start with a round table questions. And um, let's start with Bakra here on my right side. So with all the current moon exploration initiative worldwide, both commercial and institutional, how do you see the current status of the cis lunar economy today and how it would look like in 10 years from now? Thanks, uh, Sarah. So to react on that question, I would uh, start by saying that what's happening today is uh, fully amazing. Uh, space market is ever transforming for the last 20 years. We had uh, the ever digitalization of our society and uh, that's only the beginning. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's increasing uh, uh, exponentially. Then we had in 2010 uh, the rocket uh, re reusability uh, disruption brought by SpaceX allowing to democ democratize the access to space. So basically everything is changing every day. That's really inspiring, that's really exciting. But there is one thing that did, did not change Basically, that's the way we still access to space from Earth. And indeed, for that, uh, for one ton of uh, payload in orbit, we we'll still need nine ton of propellant just to extract from, from Earth's gravity. And most of the time, the space missions are one way, they are not reusable, and uh, debris are unfortunately increasing uh, exponentially. So one day, uh, we could even uh, imagine that uh, this uh, could jeopardize the space services to Earth. 
That's why we need to expect uh, a new era on around the corner that we could call the sustainability in space, uh, certainly allowed by the recent discovery of space resources, allowing to serve the purpose of long duration transport with uh, propellant production uh, on celestial bodies, for example, with oxygen, hydrogen, to serve the purpose of life support with oxygen that is uh, also available on the celestial bodies, and to serve the purpose of uh, energy uh, needs uh, like hydrogen uh, could, uh, could serve. And this, uh, we could imagine that it could completely reinvent the way space-based space missions are organized uh, and give, of course, an unprecedented advantage to the first nations that will master it by being able to go deeper in space, to stay longer in space, to extend the lifetime of the spacecraft by being able to refuel them and consequently to reduce the debris and consequently to reduce again the cost of access to space. So obviously, uh, humanity is move moving towards a sustainable presence in space starting by the moon, which race is driven uh, today clearly by the US and uh, Russia and China. Uh, but hopefully uh, many nations like UAE, like Europe, like Japan are uh, joining the endeavor, of course today with much lesser extent, but we could expect uh, a new cis-lunar ecosystem uh, about to emerge. And uh, I would say uh, to conclude that uh, this uh, moon settlement uh, and therefore, is certainly a unique opportunity of the century uh, for a huge team building at a worldwide level that will happen just once. So provided, of course, main of the nations jump into it quickly because uh, we have no time, huh? it happens now, we could imagine that this cis-lunar ecosystem that is emerging could become within 10 years, if everybody is collaborating, it could be become a kind of cis-lunar economy that could be sustainable for the benefit of humanity, for the benefit of peace, and for the benefit of industry. So we cannot miss it, and let's join it. Thank you. So Earth is not the sufficient place to start our ex space exploration with from, right? So what do you think, John Bulbar? Thank you very much. Um, yes, for, for, for the moon today, uh, we have uh, uh, some initiatives which are more often driven maybe by political aspects more than economy. Uh, they are followed by some uh, commercial uh, uh, also initiative, uh, but they are not today constituting a, a plain uh, sustainable economy. So to, to develop this economy, to seize this economy, we have to better identify what will be the market. Um, as main driver, I see three different uh, domains. So space transportation, we already know it, resource today, which is maybe a big one, and tourism, that may be the third one for the moon. We see it already uh, in the last orbit, but uh, it may happen also on the moon in the coming year. And these three domains of market that have to be developed uh, may be followed by some, uh, 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 th they need some means, some logistic, which on their side will also develop some other market. I mean, for habitation, for energy, uh, for uh, life support that kind of things. Uh, wh what can we say? This is today's situation. Within 10 years, it's uh, very ambitious. Very, very ambitious. Let's try. But let's also remember that the moon is not a symbol and it's, it's an awesome, awesome environment. So, okay, we have to try. We have to take initiative, as Bertrand said just before. Uh, but here is the situation today. Thank you. Hamad, your thoughts on this question? Um, I'm optimistic that uh, within 10 years, yes, we might uh, see some change. Uh, there are some driving forces that are uh, driving uh, the exploration towards the moon. Now we can see it. And uh, the good uh, signs are that uh, there are new nations are uh, contributing to uh, such efforts. However, I will try to be more conservative. Maybe we will not see dramatic change within the next 10 years, but it will take time. The, uh, especially the moon is challenging, doing uh, uh, permanent presence on the moon, which is, uh, I, I think, is a must. We have to, go, uh, to plan to have uh, our pr uh, permanent presence on the moon. However, it will take time, but I, uh, I believe we should start somewhere. 
in Mohammed Barash Center, we started with the uh, with very big ambition to uh, build a settlement on Mars uh, within 100 years. When we sat and saw that uh, objective, it was very uh, challenging and very difficult even to answer or to even to to start with. However, we thought that it should we should start somewhere, and the moon is the best place to start with. It's a great platform to develop technologies, to uh, test, and also to use it as a base for uh, visiting uh, other celestial bodies, especially Mars. And uh, uh, the second point that we believe in is that it will not happen uh, without uh, uh, good collaboration between space agencies, and definitely we need to uh, engage the private sector. Uh, Bernard, you mentioned that we uh, lack efficiency of uh, sending payloads to, uh, to, uh, to space. And based on uh, history, always efficiency is approved by the private sector. So, but we need to create that economy. And, uh, but uh, it has to start from somewhere. And uh, the good thing that now uh, NASA, ESA, and others are investing a lot, uh, supporting private industries to deliver payloads to the moon. And that's a good starting point, but, but we need to build something that will be sustainable to encourage the private sector to continue investment and to continue uh, to create that economy on the lunar surface. Thank you, Hamad. Alan. Thank you, Mrs. Uh, Chairwoman. Uh, dear colleagues, in Dubai, you have beautiful deserts, but they are human friendly because you have uh, free air to breathe. Uh, if you are experienced, you can survive, find some food and, uh, and water. The moon is a much more difficult desert, no oxygen to breathe, no infrastructure at all. Therefore, uh, the public hand will be needed to build a sustainable infrastructure, and I would even say public hand with an S because it will take a lot of international cooperation to build a big sustainable uh, surface ecosystem on the moon. Of course, there will be more and more business cases that will fly on the moon gradually, not now, but it will come. Uh, tourism was mentioned, but there could be other business uh, ideas. I'd like to share a story with you. Uh, once upon a time, there was a prince, and this prince was living in the 15th century in Portugal. He was named Henry, and he was nicknamed Henry the Navigator. And Henry decided to expand Portugal territory, so he developed the Portuguese maps, the famous uh, Portulans. He invested a lot of Portuguese money, a, a, a sizable share of the GDP, to send boats, to send crews, to discover the Azores, Madeira, and plenty of territories. So the public hand was there to establish harbors, uh, trade counters. And at some point, ship manufacturers, uh, merchants, started to do business. They started to bring back gold, they brought back spices, and the, the private business could take over. And I think this is a good analogy of what will happen. We need the public hand to create the condition for the business to grow. Of course, it will take some time, but there could be some niches where business could thrive. Thank you, Alan. Miriam. Thank you, Dr. al for this question. Um, I think today was the year of space tourism. We had uh, three attempts in three months uh, to bring uh, regular folks to, to space. Next year will be the year of uh, lunar exploration. I think that we had a kickstart of the sea lunar uh, ecosystem with three attempts at landing on the moon, including one by iSpace. Um, and in your question, I think the key words are worldwide commercial institutional, in which uh, Hamad and uh, Alain just, just stressed a little bit. But to me, these are really the key words. Uh, the iSpace Orlando is being developed and designed in Tokyo, currently assembled in Germany, will carry uh, the first lunar rover from the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center, Rashid rover, on display uh, in a couple hours here, um, and will launch from the US. Uh, this, is, this is what lunar exploration is about today. It's no longer about the US and Russia and the Cold War. So that's the first thing. The second thing is just having represented in this panel, we have Air Liquide, uh, you know, a non-space company with some space, uh, space uh, activity. We have agencies, uh, we have traditional space, and we have a company that's 10 years old, but still very much a new space company. 
And that's how we'll propel what is today, I think, a lunar ecosystem, or a lot of uh, lunar enthusiasts into uh, a lunar economy with some help from government, I, I, I don't stress. Um, and projecting 10 years from now, um, you know, as I shared with Hamad earlier, my, my vision will be for tens of Rashid rover no longer doing science. Because I think today, lunar exploration is still driven by science, you know, ans ans answering some strategic knowledge gaps. We need to make the transition to uh, more utilities, extraction of resources, exploration of resources, construction, um, and transforming what's available on the moon into something useful to, to build the economy. So that's, that's what I see more Rashid rovers, but also different functions, so switching from science to science and exploration, science and construction, accretions of landers, and, and so on. So let's, let me move to the next question. And I'd like to start this question now here with John Dovak. So from industrial point of view, how do you contribute or support the development of this cis lunar? So what is the main driver to make this sustain the sustainable development of the new economy? So thank you. Um, from an agency point of view, uh, I think we have to, to support the head of the market to try to uh, uh, make the market happening uh, but not to, to be uh, uh, a replacement uh, of the people who will be involved in the market, who will be one customer among others. And this is very important, I think. Uh, then, ahead of the market, what can we do? We can help for science, and it's very important for knowledge. This is not really uh, a commercial activity. This is fairly an activity, but not a commercial one directly. Uh, we have to help for technical demos, uh, whatever they may be, they may be on the domain of, uh, of uh, air liquid with the management of oxygen, hydrogen, that kind of thing. They might be uh, uh, within some uh, camera on the Rashid rover, for instance, where we are helping our colleagues. Uh, um, there may be also uh, an help for a view of the complaint chain of activities, the identification of what will be the different activities and uh, uh, probably we will have to help for newcomers to uh, uh, be able to access uh, to space activity within this harsh environment and helping them to, to understand this uh, better. Uh, some are, are doing this very uh, quickly, but nevertheless there is some experience with, uh, uh, I would say, a 60 year of uh, experience in the space domain now. So it could be helpful. For that, CNES is involving uh, uh, in, in supporting his activity within the frame of ESA, within national cooperation, and trying to set some uh, innovation uh, process uh, with some uh, place where we can do experience with some uh, challenge and uh, with some uh, uh, system like Connect Backness, which is a kind of relationship uh, for, for the different activities. Uh, and uh, the final aspect I would like to, to mention is that in that domain and in the future, human will be necessary. This is a human activity. So we will have to, to have some human in space. Uh, IA will make progress, will help, but nevertheless, when you have to put the end uh, within the regolith, <laughs> you will need some humans somewhere. That's one. How we would support the development of the lunar system? Thanks, uh, Sarah. So first, let me uh, take advantage to introduce Peter Aliki to, to explain uh, where we are coming from and how we could help. So uh, as you said, uh, we are a world leader in gas uh, and uh, cryogenics related technology uh, for industry and health. So this story is uh, lasting for uh, the last uh, 120 years. So, so that's a long, uh, that's a big uh, old lady, uh, uh, Aliki. Um, but with, uh, with uh, very fresh uh, ideas uh, on, the, on the future. Uh, and uh, we are uh, focused on three verticals. And the first vertical is uh, energy transition. Energy transition, notably through the promotion of a low carbon hydrogen society, in which we invest massively. Uh, to give you a figure, we'll invest 8 billion euro uh, in uh, the low carbon hydrogen uh, value chain uh, on the next 10 years. So that's. Uh, the, the communication that was uh, given by your CEO, so that's uh, quite uh, quite impressive. And I'm sure this could help and give synergy uh, for this uh, future cislunar economy because uh, clearly hydrogen will have a big place uh, in, uh, to play in that uh, in that endeavor. The second uh, strategic pillar is about healthcare, notably by uh, giving the access of medical oxygen to everybody on the, on the planet. 
and the third one is about digital uh, transformation. The core competency of the company is to master gas and cryogenic molecules on their entire value chain, either from production or extraction from the natural resources up to the application of our customers. And uh, we are lucky to have uh, among these applications space in which we uh, stepped in, as uh, Jean said, uh, 60 years ago now uh, with Ariane rocket on which uh, we, uh, we had the opportunity to design and develop all the cryogenic tanks, propellant management devices uh, for, the, for the rocket uh, from Ariane 1 until now. And of course, uh, in addition to supplying the propellant on the, on the, on the launch pad in, uh, in Kourou. But we, uh, we also uh, designed uh, 25 years ago some cryo system for spacecraft. Turbo machine uh, on the ISS uh, to refrigerate biological samples, again with cryogenic. Uh, cryo system of uh, Herschel and Planck for uh, astrophysics uh, observation. And uh, most recently, a uh, full product line of cryo cooler uh, for uh, Earth observation satellites to cool down infrared detectors of uh, oxygen. So even salt space is a singular activity at Arikin huh, that's employing 300 people over 67,000 employees, so <laughs> that's singular. I can tell you that's very visible and the group at uh, the IS level is uh, very attached to it because for us that's a way to push back the limits of innovation that are essentially essential for humanity on Earth, especially through energy transition and uh, hopefully tomorrow in space for uh, sustainability in space. And how uh, do we uh, like to, uh, to contribute to this future sustainable uh, economy? Uh, definitely, uh, the idea here would be this time to leverage on all the investment we are doing on Earth for energy transition for the benefit of the moon. And if I can take the example of the, the key driver that were uh, mentioned, so the first one uh, would be to raise some commercial use, some commercial uh, use case. Uh, the first one could be uh, the refueling of uh, upper stage. Uh, on this endeavor, we could help uh, definitely uh, with uh, the cryogenic expertise, uh, the liquefaction, uh, the electrolysis, uh, the fuel cells, uh, the uh, refueling transfer process uh, to show that uh, commercial usage are possible. On the IFSRU side, uh, definitely we could uh, bring to the, to, to the table our, uh, our experience in gas purification, uh, again, water electrolysis, uh, uh, fuel cells, um, uh, uh, to process, uh, to purify, to store key molecules uh, such as oxygen, such as uh, hydrogen, such as water, such as methane for uh, multi-purpose uh, use. And um, last but not least, I would speak about the power management that will be a big uh, subject on the moon to survive lunar night, but also to, uh, let's say, uh, energize uh, all the future uh, process that we'll, uh, we'll have on the moon. Hydrogen is a, is a, is a molecule that would fit that, uh, that objective. Uh, have in mind that hydrogen could uh, store energy from what up to hundreds of megawatts. And uh, clearly, uh, if uh, we all contribute together, we could definitely uh, work on, uh, let's say, regenerative fuel cell system, allowing to uh, power the moon uh, and, and, the, and the process uh, tomorrow. So as a conclusion, I would say that by doing this, by uh, fostering this uh, collaboration in between uh, Earth and space, this would, uh, let's say, uh, uh, create synergies on the technologies. We are investing uh, massively on Earth, on en energy transition. There is a lot of commonality with what's happening on the, on the moon. Now we are talking about sustainability on both sides. And by doing uh, these uh, synergies, uh, we would uh, contribute to uh, ever increase the reliability, the robustness of the technology, but also to decrease the cost, the total cost of ownership of this uh, same technology. Of course, uh, for one uh, single benefit, that is sustainability on Earth and space. Excellent, Hamad. Um, let me answer this question by commenting on Julian and saying, why not then Rashid over? And this is the key to uh, how we think we can contribute to this uh, lunar economy. The idea is that we need to keep the momentum. It's great that uh, we sh see the interest uh, on the moon, but uh, it's important, as you said, we have to have the support from the public in order to have the necessary funds for uh, supporting this economy. And uh, we believe that uh, it should happen by keeping uh, the momentum and having uh, continuous missions to the lunar surface. The idea is that, for example, in our Rashid rover, the mission has started two years ago and now we are preparing for the flight model uh, uh, and for launch next year. It's to reduce the time, uh, the development time for uh, space missions. 
Unfortunately, space missions development, especially for deep space missions, they take a long time of development and a long time even before that to get the necessary funds to start. But if we keep the momentum, we build smaller missions, uh, sustainable missions where we build one, two, or three uh, of uh, based on uh, almost similar architecture and uh, re uh, working closely with the commercial uh, uh, partners that will help us keep the momentum, explore the moon uh, further, explore more sites on the lunar surface. Uh, the moon, even though it is cl our closest neighbor, however, we didn't explore the moon uh, fully. We visited only a few places on the lunar surface. In order to visit uh, a lot of places to explore the moon further, we need to do more missions. And it's better, we believe that it's better to focus on smaller missions, quick development, and uh, rather than uh, building one big mission that will take years to develop and will take uh, most of the budget in order to develop. So keeping the momentum is the key in order to support this uh, lunar economy. I agree. Alan. Thank you, Mrs. Chairwoman. Uh, from an Airbus point of view, so from an industry point of view, uh, we need to work with the institution, uh, with the space agencies, uh, and with all the stakeholders to converge towards uh, an ambitious uh, lunar program. To me, there are two very important topics. Uh, the lunar lander, uh, we need a lunar lander that brings enough payload and uh, in a reliable and affordable way uh, to, the, to the moon to secure the logistic traffic between Earth and moon. We will need logistics to implement a big science mission, for instance, uh, radio astronomy on the far side of the moon to watch the very first moment of the, of the Big Bang and the dark ages. Uh, we can study moonquakes, we can study the flux of meteorite asteroids impacting the moon, we can study moonquakes, we can study the moon ionosphere. Does it exist? Is it strong or not? Not very clear. So a lot of work to be done still, uh, still on the moon. To develop the lunar sustainable uh, ecosystem, we need ISRU. This was, uh, this was said by my colleagues. Uh, at Airbus, we have developed uh, demonstrations uh, we can create oxygen from regoliths. We can create uh, pure, uh, high purity metals. And with this metal, we can do 3D printing. So this will avoid to bring too many things from Earth because we have a lot of in situ uh, resource uh, to use. There will be a technical paper presented by Airbus colleagues uh, in the technical session describing the process, which are uh, very efficient, uh, quite low temperature uh, to extract oxygen and metal. Uh, last but not least, there were recently there was a call for ID issued by, uh, by ESA, and I was amazed by the number of IDs produced by our young engineers. We are implementing uh, uh, a diversity policy at Airbus. We have young engineers from many origin, genders, etc., and they were really creative. And I was really, uh, I would say, shocked by the number of IDs. And it's really good because it shows that there are things to be done on the moon as the new generation will take over. Thank you. It's always hard to follow when you're the last one. Um, I think iSpace has three contributions uh, to the, uh, the sysmic economy, but I'll do them in three minutes, I promise. Um, the first one, obviously, is transportation. Um, that's the key to enable any entrepreneur today to think about doing a learning business. That entrepreneur needs uh, you know, regular, cheap, commercial access to the lunar surface. And that also works for Hamad to do you know, missions on demand uh, multiple times a year. We can't rely on, on agency transportation to do that. So that's, that's our, main, our main contribution in the short term, access to the lunar surface. The second contribution is more related to SRU, which was mentioned. Uh, there there's a, a big uncertainty still on the business case of space resources. So we need to do exploration to reduce these uncertainties, improve our understanding of what's, you know, what's really available in terms of resource, which ones make, se make sense from an economic perspective. Um, so we're developing our own rovers and landers to do this exploration. But on top of that, we're also uh, developing um, tools for data analytics. Uh, Dr. Carlos Espejel, part of iSpace, developed the first standard um, to do the reporting of findings on uh, exploration of results from for resources and also estimation of reserves. And these are mining terms. So we're on purpose using mining oil and gas standards 
uh, as basis, starting point, to translate them to the case of the moon so that we can engage uh, those uh, resource companies, non-space companies, to start thinking about the moon. And that's when we get into the key word of sustainable development. We need to involve non-space companies, make, make them realize that their business model translates 100% to the moon. There's nothing different. Exploration business model works on the moon. All the resource models uh, works on the moon. It's just a matter of thinking about them, expanding uh, the business there, uh, and closing their business case with more and more understanding of the resources and, and what's possible. The third contribution is on the legal and I would say sustainability approach uh, aspect. Um, NASA last year made a call for uh, asking for companies to provide them with regulates, but not a, as a sample return. Just go collect some regulates and transfer ownership to us. And this is what iSpace has done. So we won two of the four contracts and talking for iSpace Europe will be the first entity in Luxembourg to test the law of space resources that was passed in 2017. The second law after the, the one passed in the US uh, about space resources. And that's key. So I think we, the law is there, the legal framework is there, but it hasn't been applied, hasn't been tested. So we want to test that legal framework about how do we do transactions of resources, which is the key basis before we can do really SRU. And on top of that, expanding on the work of Carlos on the, the mining standards, so the, the legal framework, there's also a whole discussion about sustainability and, and how to do it right uh, this time, uh, in which we also contribute via our participation in the past in the Hague uh, Space Resources Group. Thank you, Julian. Okay, so let me move to the next question, and here I'd like to start with Alan. So how can agencies and industries collaborate to accelerate the development of this ecosystem and build a moon economy? Also, what could be the role of non-traditional space actors? Thank you. Uh, here at ISC on, on Tuesday, we have created the Euro to Moon Association. It's a Luxembourg-based uh, association whose uh, funding members are uh, Airbus, uh, Air Liquide, and uh, the European branch of uh, iSpace. Uh, and the European Space Resource Innovation Center, ESRIC in Luxembourg, will become the first non-funding member of this uh, Euro to Moon Association. And our goal is, of course, to promote and develop this uh, business uh, lunar uh, ecosystem and the bylaws of this association, or we, we can call it a non-governmental organization, was signed under the aegis of the Grand Duchy Minister of Economy. So this is our first contribution, because I, I really believe we need to unite our effort, uh, traditional players, new players, uh, non-space companies that can bring a lot to, uh, to this development, to secure uh, this uh, sustainable business ecosystem uh, on the moon. Just to, to bring the things in perspective, uh, moon is the first step. Huh? Uh, before we win the Olympic Games, uh, we need to play the regional competition, and the regional competition hits the moon. And just to put again the things in perspective, uh, it's really a baby step towards humanity swarming to the stars. So the moon is really the first stepping stone. We shall never forget this. Thank you, Hamad. Um, I think one of the things that we are uh, proud of, and we, I think that is uh, uh, a success of our mission even before it started, is the collaboration we created. Uh, definitely uh, one, one of the things that we are proud of working with Kenneth and having uh, uh, instruments and cameras on board our Rashid rover from Kenneth. Also working with the, the industry, working with the Airbus, working with the iSpace uh, in achieving this mission. And uh, this means that the mission has succeeded even before it started. Also the thing that we are proud of, we have created uh, a scientific community around uh, Rashid Rover. We have uh, scientists, researchers from all over the world contributing to Rashid Rover development from the science point of view. The, the team is meeting uh, in a weekly basis and uh, are contributing uh, uh, a lot to the mission and we are proud of that. And I believe that is uh, a success of the mission before it started. So uh, if we are going to go to the moon and if we are going to create a permanent presence, uh, we have to work together. Uh, there was a space race uh, back in the 60s and 70s that created uh, great uh, achievements for humanity. We reached uh, the moon, we reached to Mars and uh, other uh, celestial bodies. But again, now 
uh, that was only for a, per, uh, a small period of time. But if we are going to the moon and uh, build our base on the moon and use it as uh, our uh, base station to support and fuel missions to other uh, celestial bodies, we need to work together. We need to work together to build the economy, to build the infrastructure, to support the industry even to uh, to build the technologies uh, necessary for such economy. I agree that having different players is a key success to moon or space exploration. Gillian, what do you think? Thank you. Um, as I mentioned, my, f my first response now this year was space tourism. We started with the Enzavi X Prize uh, 10 plus years ago. Uh, next year is lunar uh, exploration. We started with the Google Lunar X Prize about 10 years ago. And I think what's really exciting is you see, you know, space AL uh, is still active, astrobotic is still active, mass and space system is active, obviously high space is active. So um, those prices are great to get things moving, uh, but also, um, you know, create new companies. I mentioned the uh, NASA contract we have for record collection transfer of ownership that got a lot of excitement in the lunar industry. So I think one role for agencies is not to support development. It's also to uh, you know create some triggers and expand on this like idea of regulated collection and transfer ownership and say, you know, we'll pay for you know one kilowatt, you know, of electricity on the moon, or we'll pay for somebody who can build us a habitat in situ, or uh, we'll pay for you know a map of the moon that's with such a resolution. I think this is where agencies can go and position themselves as uh, customers of services and let the industry, let the partners figure out how to organize themselves around uh, the provision of the services, but not you know, direct the development and the product, go to the service level. Um, I think that that would be a key point to, to accelerate uh, all of this. And then I'll go just give an example for the regulated collection. Okay, we won the contract. Uh, what we're really trying to do out of this is uh, engage multiple partners now to perform the contract, which is very easy. But the point is to transform a, a, a tech demo into a, a business demonstration. We want to show that out of a small contract with NASA, we can create a value chain, bring somebody to do the scoop, bring somebody to do the imaging of the sample, bring somebody who wants to know how much uh, you know, sample there is, so that's a custom data. Bring somebody who wants to do the financial transaction. And now we have five non-space companies with iSpace executing this NASA contract and it's no longer about the NASA contract, it's about the fact that there's five companies in the world already positioning themselves on this first uh, you know, pioneering trans transaction of regulate. That's the key. And these are the five pioneers companies that will be there in 10 years at scale uh, doing what matters. Thank you. John Blobach. Thank you. Um, first, uh, firstly, I would say is that uh, we are collaborating today. We are collaborating on this stage. We are collaborating uh, in this event and uh, outstanding event in here in Dubai, next time in Paris. So this is the first uh, step of collaboration and uh, I think we need to exchange as much as possible to exchange ideas, to find new ideas. Uh, then uh, we have to, to, to be aware and we are all aware of that, that uh, the economy, the sustainable economy will be in some years, but investment uh, are to be done now. And so we have to convince uh, our decider, political decider for uh, uh, agencies, uh, uh, investors for private companies. So we have to convince them. And we have to find something where they could have some feedback relatively quickly. This means that we have to find something uh, which uh, will be available on Earth directly uh, to uh, uh, find the hugest possible uh, base uh, of people interested. So it might be in the domain of the dream, but it might be more or less also in the domain of uh, uh, doing money. Uh, and in that sense, I think that we, we have to find uh, some domain like health, like uh, energy management, where we can uh, 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 avoid uh, waste, because on Earth we have this problem, which is the sustainability on Earth. And we have to find that kind of thing, or closed loop with regard to habitation, with regard to uh, uh, avoiding waste at, at all domains. So th these are the, the maybe the field on the short term on which we have to, to work. Uh, we might find some, some synergy uh, in all the domains of, of, of industry. Um, 
In space, the advantage we have, we work under constraint. The environment is very harsh. So uh, uh, companies that are uh, uh, used, in fact, to work in that domain uh, uh, can bring that experience again, and newcomers uh, will bring some innovative ideas uh, to, to work uh, uh, and to find and to be confronted to this harsh environment and this constraint to avoid waste. To, and so they can create with that uh, new ideas. Next one. Sarah, I think that uh, this moon settlement is a universal uh, endeavor and a unique opportunity of a peaceful cooperation. Like it was uh, finally uh, with the ISS program uh, in, the, in the past, honestly, we cannot miss this opportunity to, to, to make the same, to inspire everybody. And practically, uh, hearing uh, at everybody, uh, this cannot only happen um, if uh, we uh, successfully implement key value chains that are not existing today. The first one uh, that is starting is a CIS lunar supply chain uh, with, uh, with iSpace, Airbus, every, every, uh, every stakeholder involved in that, but also ISRU, uh, so power management, uh, um, uh, also uh, long-term habitation. And, uh, of course, a key success factor would be a cross-collaboration between institutions, between nations, between space and non-space institutions, space and non-space industry. And for that, I'd like to make five, uh, let's say, suggestions, uh, if I may. First one, as an industrial company, we need a long-term vision to be able to invest. Uh, we only invest if we have a long-term vision. <laughs> Uh, I know that today uh, we have a consolidation of all the space agency, uh, let's say, roadmaps uh, regarding the CIS lunar uh, vision. But uh, now it's time maybe to raise that at UN level uh, so that the governments, the main governments in that, uh, in that planet, uh, understand the, the stakes of uh, moon economy as a, as a key uh, point for uh, humanity and then endorse a long-term vision, ideally 2040, 2050. And I can tell you, if this is the case, all the Earth industry will invest in that endeavor, in competency, in technology, and uh, this, will, uh, this will work. Uh, the second uh, idea I would uh, like to share is uh, collaboration. We spoke about that uh, a lot. That's collaboration between uh, space and non-space industry to leverage the maximum we could on existing Earth's robust technology to save time and to save money and to uh, avoid reinventing the wheel. But that's also cooperation between space and non-space institutions for mutual benefits of the, the, the investment. So for example, today Earth in, is investing a lot in energy transition. There is a lot of commonality in all the hydrogen technology and the technology for, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, carbon reduction uh, with uh, what we will do on the moon uh, for, uh, let's say, uh, the, 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 the space resources utilization. The third uh, idea, that we look uh, very often as an industrial company is the way we, we mature technology. Today we mature technology brick by brick or system by system. We definitely have to change this mind and now mature uh, technology through end-to-end -end value chain approach. And that's exactly what we would like to, uh, to, uh, to give as a momentum with uh, this, this uh, Euro to Moon Association by putting around the table people from industry, people from new space, people from space, people from research, and then to open our mind to uh, new ways of, uh, of thinking. And then the fourth uh, idea uh, would be uh, to address uh, our problem of time to market with subscale demonstration, the maximum we could uh, of uh, low maturity technology to uh, show uh, and demonstrate as quickly as possible key functions to demonstrate as, as quickly as, as possible a new commercial usage and then to create a kind of snowball effect. I, I can give one example. If we wait to find the water on the moon, uh, to split it into oxygen, hydrogen, uh, to uh, process uh, liquefy those molecules before uh, trying to open the commercial usage of rocket refueling, we'll lose 15 years. <laughs> so one uh, easy way would be to send water in low orbit from Earth to split it with electrolysis, to demonstrate that electrolysis in space uh, w is working, liquefaction as well, and this will pull naturally the commercial uh, use case of uh, upper stage uh, uh, rocket refueling. And the last point, of course, is about, uh, let's say, uh, uh, opening and creating a marketplace. We need to think about new business model, uh, new way of, uh, of uh, doing this, uh, and promote uh, kind of PPPs in between institution and industry uh, to, uh, to accelerate that. 
So if you share all, all these uh, ideas, of course, uh, you're more than, <laughs> than welcome to join the Europe to Moon Association, which is exactly uh, uh, meant uh, in, that, uh, in that objective, uh, to uh, start a momentum um, in, that, uh, in that way and uh, to foster the establishment of uh, space resources value chain for the benefit of a circular economy. Thank you. So, as Alan mentioned, we are all here for a common objective, the development of a sustainable and peaceful moon economy for the benefit of humanity. So let me move now to questions. And I can see here that I have multiple questions. Uh, okay. Somehow I lost the questions. <laughs> okay, so let, let me start with a question from my side. So you keep saying sustain, uh, sustainable. What is the definition of sustainable? Let's start with Hamad. Um, sustainable in for the economy on the cislunar uh, system is to make sure that uh, we are not developing missions and or supporting the industry for one time uh, visit. The, the idea is that to have uh, the moon itself with the resources on the moon to support the economy. And uh, I really believe that uh, tourism might be not of uh, a high priority, but the, that will be a very key to have a sustainable uh, economy around uh, the moon. We have seen that this year we, uh, there were three uh, uh, space flights uh, for, uh, as a tourism uh, industry. And even though uh, it was not planned properly before, but it's happening, it's happening right now. And uh, the tourism is the, the easiest way to b build the momentum for the, uh, the economy and to have a sustainable uh, economy around the moon. And we can focus on that, but definitely the ultimate goal to build the uh, habitats, to build the prisons, and uh, to build the infrastructure to, uh, bu uh, to support uh, human uh, uh, existence on the lunar surface. Thank you, Hamad. Okay, so here are the questions. So discussions on the planning and development of ecosystem on the moon have been mainly governmental and industrial. So how can the public engage in this topic? Maybe I'll start with uh, John Pluvac here. The first level for, for, for the public and engagement should be, of course, to make them green. That's uh, something that uh, has happened uh, from the beginning with uh, what uh, shows us uh, the race for, for the moon uh, in, uh, in the 70s. Uh, but then I think that the public now is uh, more and more aware uh, uh, of, uh, of the, the life of every day, of the difficulties of the life. So they have to see exactly what it will bring to them in their common life. So dream is one side, but uh, uh, day by day the activities uh, is also important. And, and so uh, I come back to what, what I said before, that we have to find some feedback from the space experience to uh, what is happening on Earth and what will help on Earth. So what is the steps to implement, um, sorry, so we have many questions and I can see that we don't have a time. What are the steps we should implement to ensure that activities on the moon are sustainable, Alan? We, we must take care that the, the business ecosystem is uh, generating revenues so that it's sustainable in an economic standpoint. Uh, we also need to make efficient use of resources. Sustainability in terms of environment sustainability is important. In situ resource is important because you don't draw also on Earth resources, which are by definition uh, limited. And by using uh, efficient processes on the moon, we may also develop technologies that can be used on Earth to be more efficient in some system. For instance, at Airbus, we developed uh, environment control system for the space missions that are now used on some submarines. So there can, there can be some terrestrial spin-offs. 
So one last question, maybe two questions. So in situ resources utilization has been a big topic for many years. So he said we never really being close to be deployed. So what is the key resources would you target on Luna? So maybe I can uh, speak about uh, key, uh, key molecules and then uh, after uh, maybe a tactical uh, way to, to, to make it happen. So the, the key molecules uh, uh, that support life, uh, first is oxygen, uh, uh, clearly, uh, for life support, but also, also for uh, uh, rocket propellant. Uh, I think everybody uh, in, that, in that room knows that uh, uh, 80% of the mass of propellant of a rocket, of a cryogenic rocket, is oxygen. So if we st start by mining oxygen, which is uh, clearly in the, in the moon rocks, 40% uh, of the moon rocks, something like that, uh, is, uh, is oxygen. Uh, I think that uh, that would be a, a good uh, a good uh, way to start. Then, uh, of course, the second mo molecule we are tracking uh, for life is uh, water, and from water uh, we can do uh, oxygen, we can do hydrogen, we could we could we could do hydrogen peroxide, we could <laughs> we can do uh, plenty of things. And this hydrogen molecule uh, combined with uh, oxygen could uh, fit the purpose of rocket propellant. Hydrogen uh, itself uh, could fit the purpose of energy storage and uh, production. So uh, for example, uh, on the moon, you have uh, 15 days of, uh, of light, uh, 15 days of night. During the 15 days of light, you could use the power uh, from, the, from the, 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 the light to uh, split uh, the water into oxygen, hydrogen. And then during the night, you would use the hydrogen through fuel cells uh, to uh, give you uh, back uh, thermal or electrical energy to survive a lunar night or to, uh, to do any kind of, uh, of uh, process. And then after, uh, we'll have side molecules such as uh, CO2, CO2 uh, created by uh, the, the people uh, coming to the moon that could be uh, uh, used um, uh, for uh, plant farming, for example, or uh, for uh, methane production. Methane could be used uh, as well for energy or for propulsion. Uh, uh, so uh, this is endless, uh, actually. So one last question, and um, it's a very interesting question. It's for ev everyone here who would like to answer. So. How do we real realize that we have an ideal ecosystem? How it looks like the ideal ecosystem? Can you repeat, sorry? How it looks like the ideal eco cislunar ecosystem. How do you know this is an ideal one? So from my perspective, um, Ideal is a big, a big word, but you know, the <laughs> where we need, you know, to go to also answer the previous question about sustainability on the business sense. I know I put forward is um, this involvement of the public and also non non space companies. That that's where we'll know we have the ecosystem is when you have uh, you know doing people doing construction and they were co doing construction on Earth and now they're doing construction on the Moon. And you have people doing completely new businesses that we didn't think about uh, on the on Earth and that are not possible on the Moon. I think maybe this is will be a science fiction, but we can think of it as, uh, for example, uh, some point in the future, there is a habitat on, on the Moon uh, where we can uh, anyone can buy a ticket to go to that habitat to visit as a tourist. But if, uh, to support that habitat, definitely there is uh, the industry taking uh, advantage of the resources on the lunar surface, either to support uh, the need here on, on Earth, to use those resources to support uh, the need here on, Earth, on, uh, on Earth, or even to support uh, further exploration uh, to deeper uh, space mission. So this is ideally, this is maybe uh, science fiction, but we don't know, maybe this can happen in the future. Anyone would like to add something? No, I, I would just like to maybe to, to say a few concluding words on my side uh, by just sharing with you a motto I have in my head, which is a civilization that does not explore has no future. And uh, maybe if I can add uh, something, I like uh, what you say in, uh, in the UAE with the hope mission, huh? uh, the impossible is possible with hope. With hope. So uh, my ideal uh, for the moon uh, would be uh, to say that uh, we are today in a world of confrontation. So clearly that's the opportunity of uh, putting, uh, let's say, uh, uh, an example of uh, peaceful collaboration up there. 
Uh, I think everybody of us uh, is seeing the moon every night uh, before going to bed. So if we can see the moon as a, a testimony of uh, wisdom, peace, and the best of humanity, that would be super. And from my side, I would say that if it would be ideal, we will not ask questions anymore. We do, people are on the earth, on the moon, and maybe uh, uh, either uh, away. So that would be ideal. Thank you, everyone. It was great to have you here and uh, looking forward to another discussion with you. Thank you.